Hello everyone and welcome to episode 634 Aussie Tech Eds. It's nearly the end of May, the 30th of May 2019. How are you doing? I'm Glenn Goodman and we've got another great show for you this week. Thanks to Warlock and Will for standing in last week. I hope you guys enjoyed a bit of a change. You know, it's always good to hear different voices every now and then and so they, they uh, ramble on about all the tech news that they find interesting, which is always good to get just different points of view and everything. I was, uh, uh, you know, sad that, that we couldn't get Will Robinson back, but anyway, we, we settled again for William Tompkinson. Uh, Aussie Tech Heads is brought to you by startnewcompany.com.au. Register your company Fast, fr- uh, I was going to say free, then. <laughs> fast, easy, and direct with ASIC. All docs provided and docs held in your account for future reference. Uh, you can uh, also register your ABN, GST, PAYG, and TFN uh, all through the same thing, and also offering registered addresses. Uh, if your company so wishes and desires one. Uh, also brought to you by ATHwebhosting.com.au, servers operate on SSD drives, uh, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration and more. And Aussie bite clock faces. If you've got a Fitbit and you want to jump in and get a uh, clock face app for the front of it, you can go to the Fitbit app gallery, look for Aussie bite for some great looking weather apps and there's one just right there if I can pick that up. Hang on, I'll get it soon enough. Nah, uh, I can't get it. I don't know what's going on this week with uh with things, but uh hang on, will that go? There we go. And uh you get that and if you use the coupon code ATH nineteen you get thirty three percent off, so thanks to Jace and Aussie Bite. There you go. All right, let's find out. Um well before we find out who's on this week, we can do that first actually, and then we can chat about the how you can join us live if you like, see and I mentioned it. Who's up first? Jordan's up first. How you doing, Jordan? Good, mate. Good? You? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, good to have you back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. well, it's only been a week. I know. I think it was just you and me last time, wasn't it? Uh, that's right. Yes, yes, yes. That's right. And Joe, how are you doing? We haven't seen you for two weeks. Yes, mate. Yeah, I've been busy, but I'm I'm back. Good stuff. Good stuff. And I see you got a few stories in, and uh, I hope you had a bit of a... Did you have some tech things to do while you were, uh, while you were off? I have, and uh, I'd like to talk to about those later. Um, maybe get someone's opinion on uh, some of the smart things that I've been working on. All right, yes. I've had a, I've had a bit of chance to play with some tech too this week. I've, I've nearly had the, I've bought a couple of things, and uh, but you know, but the biggest news, the biggest news, and I'll, I'll tell you how you can join us if you like. If you want to join us, uh, you can ring us. You can ring us on o two eight o one five two o double eight. That's 02801520888. And once the person answers, you uh, have to type in a meeting room number of 548 358 6358. I know you won't remember that. But if you're on the Facebook, maybe uh, Joe or Jordan can throw that up there. Uh, we should get that as a standard sort of post somehow. I'm not sure if we can do that, but we'll try. Uh, yeah, so, yes, either be. We'll, yeah, and then they'll ask you for an um, a, a ID number, won't they? That's right. That's the meeting room. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Maybe, maybe we can post it just before the show, so that everyone that um, comes to the, watch the show can go to our Facebook page and just have a look at it there and get the information from there. It's in the yeah. show notes. You can copy and paste it in if you like. Yes, yes, it is in the. It's there somewhere. But uh, yeah, I'll dig it out and post it for you in Facebook. All right, cool. Just in, just in the chats. All right. Now, while you're doing that, then I'll tell you the biggest news. The biggest must be the biggest news since uh, since I went on cable. I got my MBN today. How good's that? After you years, after years of waiting, years and years and years and years, it's finally arrived, and it went without a hitch. It was the the most simplest thing I've ever seen in my life. It was the most simplest. I don't know what you guys experienced. Well, Joe, you're not on it as yet, are no. you? But no, I'm, I'm still on the cable. That's right, but uh, Jordan, you're you're on it, and I think you're on. Are you on the fiber to the node? Is that what you're on? Yep. 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 So you would have had a bit of an install uh, thing, but my I'm on the HFC, so I've already had the cable into the house from Telstra and the yep. Foxtel. So the guy comes in. He was here about seven fifteen. He goes hmm, and he uh, unplugs the Telstra modem, plugs the MBM modem in. He says, "See you later." 
and it was all done. It was the simplest thing I've ever seen in my life. I was expecting to have to, uh, you know, um, set up routers and all this sort of stuff, you know, and reset up Wi-Fi and all this. But no, it was just the MBN modem because these. what happens is every house gets the MBN modem and then you supply your own router or your ISP will then supply with a router of their choice and you plug the router into the MBN modem and then that and that's the your then that that router is the Wi-Fi. But uh, this MBN thing, MBN modem, my setup was uh, out of the wall I already had the Telstra modem and then that went into an, another router so he just replaced the middleman the, the little modem and away it went so great so it was all right uh, speed wise uh, I went on the nine what the hundred down 40 up plan I probably did a few tests today uh, continuously getting about 90 95 down and about 30 35 up so so far so good happy with that yeah, you got to be happy with that yeah, I am. I'm, it's going to be so good. Like after the show, when I put it all together, you know, and edit it and upload it, it's just going to save so much time. It's just going to be so awesome. I'll tell you, because normally, say with the YouTube, I don't normally upload it till tomorrow uh, or the next day, and it normally takes about an hour and a bit. Uh, depends how long the show goes, but normally about uh, for an hour show, it'll take about an hour ten minutes to upload. That was at five meg up. Uh, at, if I, if you're lucky to get that, so it'll be interesting to see what I go tomorrow. I've uh, got a static IP, uh, all that, Aussie broadband, uh, 110 a month, can't complain. It's pretty good. So far, how so fast, good. How fast did you say your uploads were? Uh, 35. Oh, yeah. What are yours? About 78. Uploads? No, sorry. <laughs> Downloads. <laughs> yeah, about, about 38 or something, I think it was, yeah. Yeah, right. So you're on the 140. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Say that again. I you're was, you're on the hundred forty. Call numbers. I was oh yeah, sorry. So no, that's all right. So um, one hundred and forty one. You're on the hundred down, forty up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah cool. Down, forty up. I pay an extra twenty bucks a month or something for it. So it's about ninety bucks a month or something. Yeah. yeah. What are you paying a month? Uh, one hundred and ten. One hundred and ten. Yeah. Yeah. It's mine's with Telstra. Yours is with Aussie broadband. Yeah. So so far so good. Although I did see a uh, graph today about. I was I was reading something or other about uh, the the company speeds, and I tell you, poor the Aussie broadband. They only reached their advertised speed twenty five percent of the time. It was the lowest of the whole lot. But um, I can't believe it. But uh, I've had nothing but good reports from it, so I'm sure that those graphs are a bit wonky. So we'll see. I've got a free month, so no contract. So you know, I'm not not locked in any. Looks like I'm bloody looking at myself on the camera. Here. I'm turning into a dwarf. There we go. I'll turn the turn the camera up. How's that looking? All right. <laughs> so, yeah, all good this end. Yeah, uh, Brett, yep, the HFC MBN, so far so good. So, pretty happy. How exciting, eh? It is exciting. I just can't wait to upload now. I just, you know, I've been so, you just had that stuck at well, two. Well, even the stream will be better. Oh, well, hopefully. It should I mean, last be. Last time I think you were on, we were having problems with the streaming, weren't we? Mm, yes. Yeah, well, I was only getting five, if that, five up. And I think even this week. So we'll see how we go. If anyone on the Facebook lets us know how the stream is, because the kids are playing Fortnite and everything, so I'll let them. We're going to give it a full workout. Um, all right, let's uh, kick off. No, I can't believe that you two guys have got 38 down, uh, 38 up. I mean, I got 1.5 at, at the best. Yeah. And I'm doing all right, so I can imagine what 38 is going to be like. Yeah, oh, it's, it's pretty cool. Like, I was uploading the. You know how I do the radio, uh, the Aussie Tech Aussie Tech Radio. Uh, so I was uploading those today, and I was looking like, and I had a, I could see how how fast they went up last week, and they were going up at you know two hundred k, three hundred k, and all this sort of stuff. This week it was like three meg, two meg, one meg. It was just all just flying up. It was so so fast, Joe. You got to get involved. What what what's what's your bottleneck? Why aren't you on it? Not not Me? available. Yeah. Oh, no, NBN's not available at the moment, but even even on cable, like I'm on cable, I still get my 90, 95 down, 80, 75, depending on, on the network um, you know, it's congestion. Yeah. But up, upload, the best I could, I've ever gotten is between 1 and 1.5, no bigger than that. Mm. Well, Telstra's just moved, if you were with Telstra, they've just moved everyone to 5 up. Um, so I don't know what Optus is lagging, pulling the chain there a bit, are they? So, um, yeah, not happy about that. But anyway, it's, it seems to be doing the job fine. So that's why I'm saying I can't imagine what you, know, you and Jordan are on 38 up. I can't imagine what that's like. Yes. Oh, you will one day. You will one day. And yeah, it's unreal. It's unreal. I'll tell you what, my mum got the satellite uh, version of it, and she lives out in the middle of nowhere. And just doing remote, remote desktoping with her was just, it was just so difficult. Yeah. Know, with her and her ADSL connection. And then she finally got the satellite one. 
Yeah. And how much better it is to just remote desktop in and help her with her emails and stuff. And she's uploading to me at a good pace. It's so good. Mm. Uploads. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's great. It makes everything go more efficient. And uh, Justin, yeah, he agrees with us as well. Me faster, you know, it's great. It's awesome. Yep, yep. Uh, Justin must have HFC, so uh, he's in the Facebook lounge, and he's a, he's in a green all around. So that's good. Well, let's not talk about my Facebook, uh, my NBN thing all night. Uh, let me tell you about the uh, AussieTechRadio.com. You get the TuneIn Radio app, search for Aussie Tech Radio, bang, there you go. Or go to AussieTechRadio.com for all the rest of it. The Facebook.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads, YouTube.com forward slash Aussie Tech Heads. Show notes at uh, AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash podcast. All right, so uh, while we've been or away I, I guess I had an email from Damien so thanks for that Damien he writes he goes hey Glenn thanks for the podcast really enjoy it that's very nice of you to say so a couple of things that might interest you uh, he's got a I have a Huawei Mate 20 Pro and uh, so I'm not sure what's going to happen to you with those in the near future uh, this phone <laughs> was released prior to the Samsung S10 but has features of the phone like fingerprint sensor in screen reverse charging etc like your Xiaomi Chinese but way ahead of the mainstream brands yeah that's right I think uh, look those Huawei's I did read something to say that the existing ones will still play pretty nice with the Android Play Store and, and whatnot. it's just the new ones that are coming out uh, may not play nicely. Uh, Google's going to, because of the US's decision to, you know, block, you know, no, to, to block IP or to whatever this trade war was going on. But anyway, the Trump has said to Google can't do anything with China. So no one's doing anything with China. Uh, yeah. yeah, so there we go. Sorry, uh, I was just going to say it's kind of funny because, you know, Huawei or Huawei or whatever you want to pronounce it, they're um, such a big, big business, like, you know, making millions or billions of dollars, um, you know, I start to wonder sometimes how much of it is just the US being hard to deal with. Yeah, oh, I don't know. They, they've, got... they've got their history, I suppose, to, to prove that they're shonky or they're not shonky or whatever. But... Mm. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get into some stories. I know you've got a few uh, this week, Jordan, so let's let's start with you. What have you got cooking? On Facebook, you're getting a screen freeze? I don't know. Oh yeah, all right. I'll go with me. I had a um, I had a, a something uh, while you were talking about the internet. Um, just a just a brief one. Where is it? Telstra rolls out Australia's first five G service. Right. Yes, that's good. So Sydney, uh, Australia, joined the ranks of the nations adopting the fifth generation wireless networks with Tuesday's service launch by its largest mobile carrier, Telstra which released a 5G smartphone from Samsung Electronics the same day. Uh, Telstra is rolling out 5G services initially in parts of 10 cities, including Sydney. Uh, the fast network is available in less than 10% of the area in commercial in the commercial capital. But um, plans call... What, what am I up to? Lost my spot, sorry. But plans call for expanding coverage areas and increasing cities where 5G is offered to over 35... Uh, next year um, the price of 5G plan offering 160 gigabytes of data and unlimited calling is $154 Australian per month including Samsung's uh, S10 handset yeah so Asians agency allocated 5G spectrum to four major telecoms including Telstra and second ranked Optus in December second ranked yeah look I, I saw that as well and look I've got some I got a little chart of prices there uh, mm. for you to have a look at but yeah they reckon that that hundred and well with Telstra these these plans are coming out this week from Telstra and I think that Samsung Galaxy S10 is coming out this week as well to to fit nicely with the plans uh, mm. but Telstra's got that 160 gig plan for hundred and nineteen dollars a month um, but the thing that interested me uh, with that story that I read anyway with the one that 10% coverage though 5G so I, so I assume you'd, you'd be on 4G most of the time five, yeah 4G most of the time mm, yeah but there's one little paragraph in the story that I read that came from where this come from um, crn.com.au uh, the, pretty much the last paragraph it said Telstra has also said that the 5G won't cost extra for the next year but that it will eventually become extra $15 a month so, so they're going to charge you an extra fifteen. This is in their in the plan, extra fifteen dollars if you want to get on the five G. Wow. Yeah. So, just I wonder if it'll will it still be an issue for gamers. I wonder whether they can use it. What five G? 
Hmm. Well, I guess they can use it. Well, but don't they say that gamers don't like their mobile um, data because of caching and other sorts of issues, even though mobile data is probably still currently faster than my home internet connection? <laughs> I think I did a speed test on my phone the other day and it was 100 and something megabytes, or well over 100 megabits a second, whatever it was, and I'm thinking, I can't get that fast at home. Yeah, well, the 5G is supposed to be super fast, isn't it? And that's why yeah. they've they've given the, these uh, big data plans because they reckon, like you know, faster the faster your phone goes, uh, the faster you're gonna chew through data. The more data, so 160 gig a, a month on your phone. We're all crying out for just you know a five gig. <laughs> well, I don't use a lot of gigs on my phone. I've I've, I've paired back to two gig a month. Yeah, I'm, I've got I've got 30 on mine. I don't reckon I go over about two. Yeah, right. What what do you do, Joe? Are you a big 4G user? No, I don't. I, I, I'm on a 30 gigabyte plan myself. I might go through about five or six. Mm, yeah, yeah. Well, I was on. I was a bit tight, you know, because the five the five gig a month plan was twenty five dollars, and I thought I'll get away with the fifth the fifteen dollar a month plan of two. And uh, I've only once. I've only just went on to that uh, fifteen dollar a month plan, and I've had to top up once for ten. So I still had to pay the twenty five anyway. So. Who's that with? Did you say? Uh, Aldi. Oh, with the uh, with the Aldi. Can yeah. On that one. They won't get 5G very quickly, I wouldn't imagine. Yeah, well, I haven't got a 5G phone any. My little Xiaomi, she doesn't, she doesn't know what, what 5G is. But you'd be struggling even to get 4G with Aldi, isn't that right? Or have they got nah. 4G now? No, nah, no, nah, they're 4G. I they wouldn't have done it if they didn't. 3G for a long time and they didn't have 4. Yeah, that's right, because Telstra was only wholesaling the, the 3G. Yeah, but they had, to, they had to do the 4G, otherwise the thing was useless. You can't sit around on 3G all your life. Jeez. No. No, that's right. Uh, look, <laughs> well, let me get to a. Uh, well, I'll do a, a, a interesting story first. I, it was the the last story in the list, but um, it was interesting. I like to get them up front because sometimes you know people uh, tune out. <laughs> so, but I wanted I wanted to tell you about this one. There's a website called the Persistence of Chaos dot com. Now, what the Persistence of Chaos is was that there was a, a laptop that was up there for auction, and it did sell for one point three million dollars. Uh, now, why you would think? Now, why, why, why would you buy a laptop for one point three million? Let me tell you the specs. Let me get this up. Now, normally, normally, if you're on the video, I can show you these things, but I can't this week because uh, I just can't capture the Firefox for some reason. Uh, the specs of this. Oh, where, where is this gone? Persistence of chaos. I'll tell you the specs and let me know if you would be, if you would buy it for one point three million. Um, it's an air gap Samsung NG10, fourteen gig, ten point two inch blue network, two thousand and eight. Windows XP SP three. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. So we're going into antiquities now. Yeah. Right. But you know, do you know, do you know why people wanted to buy it? Oh, it, there's a picture there. You got a picture up. Yeah. There's the picture. But it was it was on up for auction. Uh, because it had six pieces of malware on it, so how do you like that? So that's what that's the that was the the selling point. So it was a laptop that was packed with six types of dangerous malware. The artwork and it was art. That's what it was sold. It was artwork. It was, it was sold as artwork. So it was a joint project between art, this artist Guo Odong and cyber security company Deep Instinct. And an, an anonymous bidder bought the 11-year-old laptop containing the malware. Among the malware loaded onto the PC was the I Love You virus from 2000. Uh, also included was the WannaCry ransomware that uh, struck all the most... Ransomware? Yeah, ransomware. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what, you, you would have wham. It, it, it was ransomware. <laughs> but you would be crying your eyes it? out. Um, because the sale is restricted to the US, whoever purchased the laptop will receive it only once it ports oh how's it yeah so because the sale of the malware because it is restricted in the US whoever purchases this laptop will receive it only once its ports and internet capabilities have been functionally disabled so so you can then turn it back on when you get it yeah well there you go but how's that 1.3 million dollars for an so infected what's worth more the laptop or the or the 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 um the 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 viruses <laughs> yeah well it was just uh, the, the, the whamware <laughs> Some, somehow it was just art on the auction page it was sold as uh, there's a pa it had a live stream it was it had a live stream of this computer in, being infected but now there's just a sold sign up there it's the persistence of chaos .com, if anyone's interested um, but it's something to do with the spam that's on it the yeah, it was just art an, art an art piece a piece of art that's yeah. weird yeah the I love you virus so the funds didn't go to charity or something 
No, doubt it. <laughs> the, the love you, I love you virus, the my doom, so big, wanna cry, dark tequila, and black energy. Uh, the black energy was a crude. A root kit process injection technique, robust encryption, and a modular architecture known as the dropper. Black energy was used in a cyber attack that prompted a large scale blackout in the Ukraine in 2015. So these viruses weren't mucking around. They, right. they found the good ones. So, mm. so there you go. That's just very interesting. I thought it was uh, quite a, a unique sort of story. There you go. It was unique. It was good. Yes, uh, but I wouldn't be throwing. I wouldn't be throwing twenty bucks at it just quietly. But um. No. No, but uh, you plan on using that that uh, the the malware for something. Yes, <laughs> I'm sure you can download malware from somewhere if you if you wanted to. You'll probably find a copy of it somewhere and not have to pay that much money for it. Mm, probably. Now, Joe, what what have you bought since you, since we've seen you last? I, I I bought one of those Samsung Smart Things Wi-Fi units, um, the ones that have the added uh, hub on them, so that you can connect your Smart Things uh, devices to it. Right. Oh yes, that you've been talking about one of those. Yes, I finally got it, and um, I connected it all up, and it seems to work okay, except for a couple of things that I'm not happy about, and that is that um, you can't sort of you can't get it to work. Well, I couldn't get it to work alongside my existing home network, my wireless network. Right. So, as in, like. Um what the two interfered with each other, or you did, or you wanted to try and merge them together? I wanted to run them as separate networks. Right. So yeah, sure. You, once once you you go through the settings, you can actually then go and name your new network. You can give it a new password and everything. Yep. Um, that works out fine. But the only thing then is that only devices that are connected to that network, like it will like this quarter, for example, Samsung network. Um, any devices that are connected to that Samsung wireless network will then only connect to that network, but then for some reason they're not going through the internet and I can't access them via the other network. Right, so you can't, the internet's not passing through? Is yeah, that... right, so right. I'm still having difficulties with that. And, and the problem is I can't actually get into the router itself because uh, it is like a wireless router yep. and, and change any of the network settings. Oh, they're right. Sort of like whatever it detects, uh, that's what goes through. So, so it, you, you can't actually go in there and change any the subnets or anything like that. So they say in like how you how they want you to use it is just you just plug it straight into say your modem, and then that's it. You let the Samsung be the only device on that internet connection. It it appears to me that that's what they want. Yes, um, you, you, they don't like you using your existing router. And and look, in all in all fairness, um. If you were to run, you know, two or three of these, um, like it's it's used as a mesh network, you can get two or three other little hubs and put them around your home, and it sort of connects up like a mesh a mesh network. How do you but, connect the first or that one up? Is it uh, by LAN or Wi-Fi? Must be yeah, by LAN. Yeah, by, by LAN. Yeah, it have to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. And so, how many ports? How many Ethernet ports are on the back of it? Only one. Uh, two. Okay. Sorry. One in, one out. Okay, so okay, so you must be able to put one in. So that must be so you obviously put the from your existing router. Have you put from your existing router in to the Samsung? That's right. Yep. And it's, there's mm. also an, an out port on the back of that that um, Samsung Smart Things yeah. router. Have you put a? Um, you attached a computer to the Samsung out? No, I haven't connected anything to that. I don't think there's a need for it unless you want to connect it to another um, smart device, you know, another Samsung smart device. But wouldn't you, like, if you connect to the computer, you might be able to then uh, see its settings? Like, could you navigate easier uh, to its uh, uh, setting page, whatever you call it? Well, I've, I've been trying to access it via the app. I don't think there's a web interface that you can use at the moment. Well, I haven't seen one anyway. I haven't I haven't right. been actually looking for it. But mm. you, all of us set up by the Samsung Smart Things app. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, keep working at it. I'm sure you have to be able to do it somehow. Like, yeah. Uh, the other thing I didn't like about it, and um, yeah, go on, Grant. I uh, go, go, Jordan. What's the unit called? What is it? A. Uh? It's a Samsung Samsung Smart Things Wi-Fi router. Yeah, you should. It's, oh, it's called it's a like router. A, it's like a little round hub thing. Just it's, googling it because I haven't heard of it. If it's if it's called a router, you'd have to think that it's going to act like a router. 
Well, it, it is. A powerful if I, if I to go, is the one? Yeah, it is. If I was to go right out of my modem straight into this router, it would work as per normal. But mm. I don't want it to work like that. I want it to run alongside my existing router. You want to make it a subnet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it should still should do that if it's if it calls itself a router. But but any, anyway, I'm sure we'll, you get it. Yeah, we'll get it going for you, you Joe. You know what I'm thinking of doing, and I don't know if this is going to work or not. Um, I'm thinking of coming out from the back of the modem. Yep. Um, using a, a double Ethernet adapter. Mm. Right. So the back of the back of the modem will come out with the network port to a double Ethernet adapter. Run one to the smart things. Hub, yep, and then run the other one to my existing router. Mm. So, and then my existing router changed the subnet on that. So, therefore, it's like a slash two subnet something, what's or the, a different sort of subnet. What's the IP address of this thing now? Out of the box, it, it runs out of one nine two dot one six eight something or other. Right. So have you tried going to that address in your web browser? Yeah. No, I haven't. Um, I, I should. Hey, eh? I should try yeah, and do that via yeah. the port port number yeah if you just hook your computer straight into it and then just go to that 192.168 and you'll probably get a setup page and you maybe. Might, maybe and you might be able to do a couple of things yeah look i, I don't know I, I wasn't aware of all these things we wanted before i got it um mm. i what i do like about the the samsung smart things router is that it not only is it a, a wi-fi router but it's also a Zigbee router. Oh yes, you're you're on the Zigbee stuff on the Zigbee train. Right, it's on. A, it's also a Zigbee device, and yep. it's also a, 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 M, a new M Wave device. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. Right, so it's got all this uh, IoT stuff built into it, right? So you can connect them via each other, mm. um, and start running what they call routines or scenes um, that allow you to do many things around the home. You know, like turn on the light and then. It sends you a message and, and things like that. It allows you to do a lot of things. Mm. Well, I bought a Wi-Fi, I think it was a TP-Link Wi-Fi PowerPoint thing. You know, you plug it into the PowerPoint and got another PowerPoint at the end of it. Um, but I haven't set it up yet. <laughs> I might get around well, see, it this week. That's, that's, that's the other thing. I, I've got about four or five of those Wi-Fi PowerPoints. And I've actually um, started uh, connecting it to the, the device and see if it could pick it up. Mm. But it wouldn't actually pick it up. Um, for some reason, it picked it up on. Uh, it only picks up 5G. It must be hardwired to pick up 5G stuff. Yeah, right. Oh, we'll 5G have 5G Wi-Fi. I'm, I'm not sure what's going on with it. I have to look. I'm, I'm, yeah, I haven't been able to find much information. What's Russell saying here? Give me a sec. Uh, but why? I just go down to the modem, smart things, normal Wi-Fi. Yeah, see, Justin, I'd rather run two separate networks. Um, and the reason I'm, I want to do that is because. Um, I plan on running some Wi-Fi lights in the home, right? And I've got like maybe uh, 30 of them, right? And and I don't want to degrade my Wi-Fi signal by running all these Wi-Fi devices. Mm. So what the idea is with this Samsung SmartThings hub is to run all my SmartThings to that hub. That only takes up one port. So um, the bandwidth is very minimal when it runs 30 or 40 devices um, on this one particular device. Um, and and they only, as as you know, they only just very small um, data between the, between the you know the communication between the Wi-Fi. There's only a very small data, but at the same time, I don't want to have thirty or forty different devices running, you know, lights, turn them on and off, and whatever else. Um, otherwise, I'd run it's just a straight, a, say, a straight um, Samsung or straight Wi-Fi. That's why I bought this one. Mm. I'm sure it's going to have to work the way that you want it to. It has to because, like, if you buy one of these things, you can't just expect to bring it home. That be the the only Wi-Fi device in your router in your house. It wouldn't that's work. Work with what you've got. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it'll, there'll be a way. It wouldn't be very sellable if it was too hard for the average user. Yeah, there'll be a way. There'll be a way. Oh, what's Justin's got? Seventy six devices on his home network. <laughs> oh, jeez, and twenty two lights going off. <laughs> <laughs> wow, 76. Yeah, I've probably got about 20. Bloody I don't bloody have hell. any, so get with it, man. You know? Yeah. Uh, look, I, I don't I've, even I've have been, any, been a, a lot of research. AI in my house at all, <laughs> except for my phone. Yeah. yeah. I've been doing a lot of research, and um, most of the research I've come across indicates that um, maybe not 
20 or 30 devices, but when you start getting into a lot of devices, your Wi-Fi signal does degrade somewhat. And it's not so much the Wi-Fi itself that's the problem, it's more the router that's the problem. The processing mm. power behind the router yep. can't handle it. Yeah, you gotta get a you gotta get a grunty router. Right? As well. So um, I love my PF sense. What's Ray saying here? Ray saying he created an IoT guest EIFI network for security to keep the dodgy cheap IoT <laughs> stuff off the network. Hey, Is that what you're saying by you wanna have a separate network? Are you saying you want to have a separate network just for all these devices that's not included in your personal network? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So rather than having my laptops and my you know Everything PlayStation and all that running off it, just have all my lights, my my, my um, doorbells and and all sorts of stuff just running off it. So have you got a modem then, or a, like a Telstra router or something, or whoever your internet's with that's got m multiple ports on it? I do. Yes, yeah, but so it's actually why? it's actually bridges at the moment. Yeah, but either way, you've got a, a, a main router, like a main one that you're using, that comes in before you use your main router? I have a main modem only, yeah. Yeah, and on the main modem, does it have multiple LAN ports? No, only one. Only one. So All right. can you take that to a router and then get another two routers? <laughs> that's, what, that's, that's what I've got, right? I've got the main modem coming out from, from Optus, for example, right? Well, that's my provider. It goes to your router that you've got. It goes owned. to my ASUS router. Yep. Now, from my ASUS router, that's a, a five-port router. I take one of those ports, and it goes out to um, this smart things, right? And the rest so your of the modem's bridged, which means your router's doing the routing. Exactly right. So you could also set up. Does your modem have have multiple like DMZ networks and stuff like that in it? Your router. Um, I, I, have, I have seen that it's got those DMZ zones, but I haven't set anything up like anything up like that yet. You know, yeah. Well. Yeah, we'll we'll leave it there, and um, we'll talk we'll, to you about it after the show. We won't hold up the whole thing, but you can get you know two routers and just go use the. Should be able to. Router. Yeah, should if be you able to. You get another router and plug into your your router, but plug in by the internet port instead of the same LAN ports, mm. and that'll become a separate network. Yeah, that's that should work. But let's um let's move on to yeah, something. You're right. It should work. It's just that I can't change the configuration on the second router. That's all. Yeah, it should. You should be able to do. We'll think of something. Uh, we'll we'll fix you up, Joe. Don't Come worry. Come back to it. Um, look, well, let's move on. I've got another one just quickly here. Uh, for those that use Canva, and uh, for those you've heard of Canva, it's like a uh, graphic design software that's on the net. And I didn't know, and I didn't realise it is, is an Australian piece of software. So it's a. Uh, has alerted Canva has alerted its users to an attack that has seen a number of community username and email addresses accessed. The attack was detected on Saturday. The company's letters to users states that although the hackers obtained passwords, they obtained them in their encrypted form, uh, so which is good. So uh, you know, so that you might have lost your email address and lost your uh, whatever else they accessed, but they, they didn't get your password because they were encrypted. They were all encrypted. They were salted, hashed with bcrypt. Uh, the company is sufficiently concerned by the incident, incident to recommend, in line with best practices, that everyone, if you're on Canva, change your password. Uh, and Canva, how's this, has over 130 million users and is one of Australia's most prominent technology companies. Um, yeah, look, that's, uh, I don't know if we can get a picture of that. There's, no, not really. That picture doesn't work for some reason. It's going to be crazy is that there. an online thing, is it? Or? Yeah, I don't know. It's a GIF. Maybe it just doesn't like GIFs. But anyway, uh, Joe, what have you got? Time for one of your little stories. I have this... Um Alexa skill um, that's just coming out in the UK uh, that some people might find interesting and it's and it's to help people with Alzheimer's uh, and dementia um, some sort of um, skill has been developed in the UK for, to help people with uh, early stage dementia uh, to maintain their independence right yeah it, the, the skills called my carer uh, skill in yep. the, Alec uh, the Alexa um, and allows users to set reminders for daily tasks like doctor's appointments and preparing meals and things like that. Right. So, um, so what is it? How does it actually? So, the Alexa, you can say to Alexa, "What fix me that uh, remind me when tea's on or something." Yeah, you know, it, it's a, like a little skill that you have um, that you add within the device. It's like a. Um, 
and it and it tells you, you know, you can program it to tell you when you know your next appointment is with your doctor. Okay. Um, and you know, re remind me that I need to go uh, turn the lights so -and -so off later on this afternoon. Mm. Yeah, it's, right. It's, it, people like you and I, perhaps we don't have that problem to remember things on a daily basis. But this special um, Alexa skill that's been um, added uh, in here in uh, for the Alexa uh, app, right? It allows you to do things, stuff like that. Yeah, I see that it. Uh, yes, yeah, so allows it will. You can program it so it will help you. It will help the person recall facts about their family and friends. So that's um. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. So, yeah, so that's that's a good little thing if you've got an Alexa. Mm. Um, you know, uh, there's a lot of people out there who might you know use their Alexa device for listening to music and and for um, you know the, you know getting weather and asking questions about this or that. But this little school here, which they've just added and they're just trying out, um, I reckon it's a good idea for people who uh, you know who have that sort of disease. Yeah, oh, I think anything that's going to help them have a better quality of life is going to be good, isn't it? Like, I guess you know, even if it's you know, if they're stuck, if they're living by themselves and they're say maybe in the early stages or whatever, you know, maybe you know when you hook your lights up and you turn all your lights off, it says, "Hey, uh, don't forget to turn the stove off and things like that." Have you checked the stove and maybe things like that? Yeah, that'd be that's a good little thing. Yeah, that's right. Um, so, oh, listen, before I go on, there's something I need to just a shout out to Ainsley. Who um who contacted me during the week uh, on a on a product for um to talk to her about a product? I just want you to know that I I haven't forgotten about you. I did get your email, but I went into the spam folder and I didn't just see it until recently. So um I just want to let you know that um I will contact you during the week sometime next week if you're listening to the show. All right, good on you, Ainsley. Joe's on the case. Um, now, have you guys noticed that there's less and less ATM machines? Is this a thing that's that's uh, gone into your brain and you've gone, oh, there's not many ATM machines around anymore, like phone boxes? Well, if you did think that, you would be right, because the National Australia Bank has quietly got rid of 1,943 teller machines. Uh, the financial statements reveal it is now only has just only got 926 ATMs in Australia as of the 31st of March, which isn't a lot, is it? That's like under a thousand ATMs. Uh, that's not much at all. You think there must be a thousand towns in Australia, and you know, like most of these big, bigger sort of towns or whatever, they'd have, you'd have to have an ATM. But no, nah, this is the way of the world. It's all uh, F POS and touch and click and tap and go and all this sort of stuff. Uh, that compares to so in March two thousand and eighteen, so only twelve months ago, the company that comp they had two thousand eight hundred sixty nine. So wow. And 2,695 in September. So they've been closely, uh, quietly getting rid of them. Westpac has got rid of 350 ATMs in the last half year. Uh, Westpac's 208, 2018 annual report stated it pulled 400. So ATMs, they're on the way out. Who would have thought, eh? I remember the first there was ATM. something in the news this week about that, wasn't it? Where they're using now some sort of an app or something and not have to worry about going through your normal bank or ATM machine? Yeah, right, right. I know uh, the NAB pulled out of that, that Ready Teller network, and I noticed that there was one up the street, there was a Ready Teller that went, and um, yeah, but I guess you don't really need. Where do you... When was the last time you used an ATM, Glenn? Uh, yeah, but I'd probably go remember. once a month, I guess. Probably once a month. I'm more likely to go into the bank and have a chin chinwag with the ladies behind the counter than I am to go in. I can't be bothered waiting in the line, <laughs> so I don't. Never I get a line it. in there. No one ever goes in the bank either. Really? Yeah. Maybe ATMs are gone and banks will be next. <laughs> yeah, well, I think they wish they were. Uh, you can get a loan online now, and you don't even have to go to a bank anymore. Well, I remember the Westpac, the the uh, ATMs first come out. I'm pretty sure Westpac might have been the first. I remember it dispensed five dollar notes. I remember putting my card in, getting a little five dollar note out. And Gee whiz. I know, I know. It was a long time ago. Uh, all right, uh, Jordan. Is your uh, Facebook feed stopped, Joe? Um, let me have a look. No, mine's no, still, it's still going. Still going. Mine stopped. I don't know what it is. Whether it's me or it just says no one's watching it and it's paused. Mm. No, we've got three people watching it. Four people watching it. Oh, going off. <laughs> now, like a frog in a sock. Now, uh, do you want to do? I a... do have something similar along that. Actually, um, 
I had a, a little story. Where is it? Oh, don't tell me it didn't come up in my notes. You still using that edge? Well, while you find that... Oh, I had one, and maybe it didn't come up. Oh, you know what? I think it was the last one I read on my phone, and then I got interrupted. But I can tell you what it was brief, briefly off the top of my head. It was just that 7-Eleven are getting more and more and yeah, I'm using this app. I think I may have spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. But they've now, I think in was Richmond from reading the story, somewhere in Richmond or Melbourne or something, somewhere in Melbourne, 7-Eleven's now got rid of their uh, their counter and their, their guy that stands there, you pay your pay your petrol and everything at the counter yeah it's gone. you just click and go you use your app so they've got a 7-eleven app you go into the store and you get your petrol or you buy what you want in the store you scan your barcode and you pay for it with your app and leave yeah right well i i can pretty much do that now except i hand the phone over uh and he's and the guy scans it like there's with the... no there's not even a guy there they reckon in this yeah shop. right yeah so you just walk in and you pay for it with your phone so you know yeah, why not move that out to the Bowser? Check out chick, but it's Seven Eleven. <laughs> well, why not move that out to the Bowser? Well, yeah. why not? But they, they've still got their store there. You can still go mm. in and buy, you know, go and buy a packet of smokes or whatever it is you have to get from the shop, I suppose, and scan your barcode and go. Well, I've only just discovered Seven Eleven in the last couple of months, and you know, you like the Slurpees. Find their coffees, did you? Oh no, the Slurpees lured me in. Yeah, the, the coffee's got me. I'm there every day. Yeah, and then the every coffee's... Day, I reckon I have a coffee at least once a day. Yeah, have you got the app, the 7-Eleven app? No, I haven't. Because you... I have seen it. Yeah, you get the app and you get like the large uh, coffees uh, for a dollar or something. If you've got the app, you get the large ones for a dollar. That's right. Yeah, so that's pretty good. Yeah, well, that's the app. Apparently, you just use that app. So you walk into the 7-Eleven store and you pay for it with that app. And they got that fuel, uh, fuel lock-in thing. Uh, so you can lock the price of your fuel in. And so to tell you how good this is, like my little cube only takes 40 litres, right? But uh, it saved, I saved the other day, I saved something like $18 to fill it up because I locked the price in at like $1.19 uh, when, and I had to fill up when the Bowser price is $1.67. So I saved, yeah, it was, it's good, it's great. So I, you lock the price in on the app as to what you want your fuel to cost you every time you go there no so what happens is you it, it finds your the best price locally right the app will so to look around and the it matches it no so to look around the uh, it's only 7-eleven stores so look around all the 7-eleven stores around say rabina there's about five or six of them within yeah. say 10 kilometers or something and uh so then it'll say okay this the one at broad beach is the cheapest so it's uh you know price petrol might be say 100 and 67 but the mm -hmm. one at broad beach might be 165 right mm -hmm. so you go okay that's pretty dear probably won't lock in for that uh but then you know the price comes down every day for the next two weeks or whatever so it gets down to about a dollar 19 and you go okay lock so you lock it in <laughs> and it lasts for seven days and then in the, within that seven days if the price goes back up you still get it for your dollar 19 but only for seven days yes that's oh, right. that sucks because I probably wouldn't use a whole tank of fuel. Except <laughs> well, you, you got to. Well, That's neither do I. But you got to manage it. So I try and manage it. So like I'll. So like the price now was about a dollar forty. So I thought, well, you know, chances are it may go down more, which then you can still get it at the cheaper price. So so I've locked in today at a dollar forty. So just in case, might go back up to a dollar sixty-seven next week. If it if you don't need to fill up, you don't need to fill up. So you just let the thing expire and lock in again next time. Yeah, yeah. So, um, oh look, Justin locked in at ninety nine point nine. Jeez, that's all right. Free coffee as well. Oh, where do you live? Yeah, there was there was an error. Oh, at Rabina, there was an error at Rabina. Oh no way! I never seen that. Ah, oh, spewing. Anyway, um, <laughs> a triple C hauls Sony to court for refusing PlayStation refunds. So Sony uh, Entertainment Europe broke Australian consumer law by telling customers they could not get a refund for faulty PlayStation games. So Sony violated consumer law by telling customers it, it did not have to give them refunds for faulty games that had been downloaded. So they also told customers it could not provide refunds unless the game developer, who is a separate entity, confirmed the product was irreparably faulty. So when Sony did agree to a refund, it told customers it could do so only with store credits rather than cash. Well. Hey, they're going to give you cash anyway. Fair income. Um, so anyway, uh, so ACCC said 
Consumer guarantees do not expire after a digital product has been downloaded. As we allege, Sony Europe told consumers and refunds must be given in the form of the original payment unless a customer chooses to receive it in store credit. A Sony support person allegedly told a customer who wanted to return the game Hitman there was actually no way for us to refund. And I suppose, well, a bit of a quandary, wouldn't it be? So, like the uh, PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store or the iTunes Store, whatever, it's only really the gateway uh, for these things. Um, so, if someone wants a refund, well, yeah, we'll say PlayStation hasn't got that the whole ninety dollars, have they? They've got maybe thirty of it. They have to give sixty to the to the uh, publisher. So then Sony's got to go back to the publisher and say, well, we want sixty bucks back. So, a bit of a quandary, but. They got they got enough money. I'm sure they can sort that out. So uh, yeah, I've had no problem. I've I've contacted Xbox a couple of times with things that maybe I've purchased that straight away was just crap, and I've said that's not what it was supposed to be, and I've um, refunded it. So it's been all right for me. But um, I, yeah, I haven't done it to a ninety nine dollar game though. Uh, what else have you got, Jordan? Kicking around on those that broken Edge browser that you use. Actually, it's not my browser that's broken tonight. It's not Edge. It's actually Edge that's working. It's the Google one that's that's decided it doesn't want to work for me. I've lost uh, the Facebook feed. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, I have a look and see what I've got. I've got plenty of stories, haven't I? Uh, I've got a, Spotify has finally added uh, added a sleep timer to their app, which is pretty cool. That was a short one, but now you can go to bed with music on and set the sleep timer. Yay! Yeah, that's all right. That's, that's pretty a good. good idea. About time they brought that out. Hmm. Um, and Apple's uh, refreshing their iPod Touch. Right. Why? Well, they've not refreshed it. They've just said that Apple's iPod Touch is now going to have the iPhone 7's processor. So oh. if you thought that... Um, Whoopie do. Yeah, if you thought that they weren't doing anything since 2015, um, now they're adding that processor from the um, from the iPhone 7. So there's two yeah, small right. Why would you buy an iPod? Kids? I don't maybe? know. Why would you buy an iPod? So the kids can use iMessage? <laughs> I don't know. That's about it. They, Australia still doesn't have Facebook Messenger for kids yet, so probably for the iMessage. Hmm. Um, yeah, right, yeah. Uh, what, what, um, what else have I got? I've got plenty. Um, oh, uh, there's an, oh, there's an, no, that's right. You go. You do one. No, no I was going to say, if Joe's got one, he's got a couple more left. I've got little ones. That's what I've got. Lots of little ones. Hmm. Go, Joe. What have you got? Okay, well, you know how everyone's got smart watches and stuff like that. So what's um, new is uh, smart hearables are coming soon. Okay, what's a smart hearable? Well, smart hearable can be something um, that's like uh, earphones or hearing aids or headphones or, or things like that. But rather than just being normal headphones, they're, they're a smart type headphone. Okay. Yeah, the sort of things they can do with it are sort of like um, they, uh, they can monitor your heart rate and your body temperature and your respiration they can do things like check activity um, uh, in fact they, they say that they're much better than having them there than rather than having them on your wrist right um, well that's what some doctors say so there's a, a platform uh, which they call the the Linux LINX Quattro platform mm -hmm. um, it's an artificial intelligence voice uh, control smart uh, hearing aid which was released at uh, CES 19 this year and that particular device will pair with an Android phone or an iOS phone um, and allow the wearer to control the hearing aid that they have on via voice commands yeah right yeah so, so they can say things like um, turn up the volume in one ear or adjust the filters for the ambient noise that's happening in the background rather than have to fill it with it with your fingers all the time. So what are these what sort of what's this coming out for? Are these just generic headphones that'll probably that'll fit most phones or is it like an Android thing or a an Apple y thing? Um they they're like a um they're like a hearing aid, normal hearing aid, but they're a smart hearing aid or a smart headphone or a smart earphones. Pretty much like the ones that you know you, the wireless ones. Um, they got, you know, they they they're not all that powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're only small, and they, so they they um they run via Bluetooth communication between the phone and the and the hearing aid or the the headphone or the earphone, whatever you've got on it. 
Yeah, right. um, some other things that they use them for is like you know, detecting head movement um, so that if you're playing a game, a 3D game, you get 3D sound through your head movement. Um, so it's more like a, a virtual reality experience. Yeah, okay. Do you think, so, but for this to work, you'd have to have the, the your headphones in all the time. Like, yeah, that's right. That's right. So, but for some people who are, you know, like a bit hearing impaired, that they don't have very good hearing, mm. rather than getting a regular hearing aid, they have these, you know, smart hearing aids now. Yeah, okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, I suppose that'd be, that'd be fairly good. Yeah, so the challenge, the challenge at the moment is that they need to try and get at least 12 hours battery life out of them because mm. your standard um, hearing aids will go, you know, 12 hours or, or so, right? Whatever happened to that technology uh, where things used to charge just by movement? I'm not sure what that was called. I know it had a name. Oh, uh, that's, that's, that's kinetic movement you're yeah. talking about? Yes, that's it. When you wind, when you wind your torch up. Well, not that yeah, hard, was, but yeah. <laughs> I think even even they had some sort of kinetic in watches too in in the early days as well okay. before they had batteries. Yeah, so I, I don't know whether that's actually feasible. Because I remember my grandfather used to have a watch, and it would just charge just from his normal walking movements and stuff like that. It would just just keep going because of this kinetic energy or kinetic charging or whatever it was doing. That, that's that's a pretty good idea. You know, they should actually think about doing something like that with these wearables. Yeah, because like then you maybe could put a little solar panel on it, but I think this kinetic thing might be the go. Because uh, you know, hopefully you'd be moving around a little bit through the day. But yeah, but anyway, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Joe. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, that's all I had to say. It was just interesting for people who um who are wearing these earpods, you know, and and, and head wireless headphones. Mm. That and some of them you can actually you know communicate, voice communicate, and um, take calls and stuff. But they're just going that step further now, where they're measuring your your heart rate in your um, your body temperature, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, Technology is about to break in that health kind of the health kind of industry, isn't it? I think for aged care and all sorts of things, it's yeah. really going to break out a lot more. I reckon in the next kind of decade. Mm. Whatever happened to that thing where they said, "Oh, if you if you're alive in the year 2000, uh, you you won't will never die again. No one will ever die." What happened to that? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, is that was that after the world was supposed to? Explode, I think so. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. So that's pretty. That's pretty cool. So headphones. Yeah, because I, I, I've got. Issue, I don't maybe, maybe have a small issue with headphones and stuff like maybe you know just for the normal Joe. Uh, sorry about the pun there, but for the normal person uh, in the street, that uh, you know, is it good to be wearing headphones all the time? Uh, and what volume should you be having them at? You know, well, see, that's the thing. That's the thing with these smart headphones and these smart hearing aids. You can wear them, listening to the music, but at the same time, you can be aware of what's happening outside. Yeah, yeah, but I've got a pair of those that I use when I'm whip snipping. But even still, though, like I, I sort of some became aware of, I become aware of volumes in headphones just recently, and you know, like you put them in when you lay down in bed or whatever, and you think, okay, well, okay, that's pretty soft, you know, it's not too loud. Uh, it's only someone talking. I was listening to a podcast, but then I found I could still turn it down like three or four notches or more, and I could still hear it, and it was still quite comfortable. So I'm wondering if are we putting a lot of too too louder stuff into our ears? Well, um, absolutely. And the more you, the loudness you have, the more your ears compress, so the louder you go. Mm. Oh, so, mm. you know, like I, I had my daughter come home from school the other day with a pair of headphones in her ear, and she's like, "Oh, there's something wrong with my ear, Dad. I think this, I think this headphone's not working properly." And I, she put it in my ear, and I, it hurt my ear. I went, "I, I've got a ring in my ear oh, straight away." Jeez, like, turned up too loud, love. You know? Oh my god! You know, you just well, can't do that. Well, that's what I'm worried about. I'm worried about this tinnitus <laughs> stuff ringing. Yeah, well, in. Oh, that, that comes with my job. I've already probably got a little bit of it. Yeah, I've got a bit of that myself too. So what does that mean? It's just, well, you can just hear something all the time. I've got, I've got yeah, you got a ring in your ears like a ooh. All the time? Yeah, all the time. I've got a friend, who, a mate of mine who's a guitarist. He goes to bed every night with, with music playing. Oh, so you just, can hear it now? Just to, just to dull out the, the yeah, ring right. in his ears. Yeah, right. Wow. Oh, jeez. Well, we don't want that. Um, now, my next one here is uh, a vote. Is being called for Mark Zuckerberg to stand down as the Facebook chairman. Um, well, no, probably not. Not really, unless he wants it to. There's a picture of Mark. 
He's a baby face, isn't he? Uh, so it's expected to take place at this week's company's, at the company's annual general meeting. Um, Zuckerberg is both Facebook's chief executive and the chairman of its board of directors. Those calling for him to step down as chairman say that this would help him focus on running the company. So the reason why, and you're probably right, Jordan, this will never happen, unless it's up, to, unless he wants it, is that yeah, well, he's 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 got the biggest shareholder in the whole thing, hasn't he? So that's right. He's he's got a sixty percent share in the company. Yeah. Uh, however, the percentage of shareholders who vote against him could indicate how much faith they have in his leadership. So this place called Trillium Asset Management owns about. $7 million worth of Facebook shares and works with other businesses that control hundreds of millions of dollars worth of the company shares. The company is worth, the company is one of those advocating for Zuckerberg to stand down. So they've, this guy from Trillium said he's holding down two full time jobs in one of the most high profile companies in the world right now. And if he can focus on being the CEO and let everybody else focus on being independent board and let somebody else focus on being this independent board chair, it would be a much better situation. So yeah, they've, they've got to, uh, yeah, twist his arm. I think when I read this one, I thought back to, you know, the, the Apple days and Steve Jobs when he got booted out, but a little bit different because uh, Zuckerberg's got his 60% here. So he's going nowhere if he doesn't want to go anywhere. Probably waiting for technology to clone himself. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so I know he's, he's been in the news of late and uh, it's probably a hard thing. And, you know, there was other stories around this week about how he's he's uh, got rid of about, I don't know, 30,000 fake accounts and how much hate speech and whatnot he's been pulling down off the site and all this sort of stuff. But I mean, like, that's... Uh, when do you, when do you start becoming? You know, why would you? Why do you want to become the 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 policeman of the world of everybody's speech and all this sort of stuff? Like, geez, that'd be a big job, like for a company even, just to monitor everything. Absolutely. You know, like obviously, like it's amazing how quick it, it comes down. Like you think of all the videos that you don't see, you know, yeah. like a, the really bad ones, like you know, like violence and suicide and all those things. The videos that they manage to get them off before. The public's just mind-boggling, and then when they finally let one slip, yeah, they they copper massively for it. They get in so but, much trouble for it. One slips. Yeah, I don't know what the the answer is. I know there was this this uh, well, there was this rule about you know being a safe harbour, and once once they start to to editorialise the comments and so forth, they lose the the safe harbour. But yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a bit of a hard one, isn't it? Bit of a hard one. Um, what else you got, Joe? Um, have you got the last else? thing? I, the last thing I have for tonight is um, I found it interesting that Apple is collecting uh, data again for Apple Maps. Um, right. Last year, Apple apparently announced that they, they were in the process of rebuilding Apple Maps uh, from the ground up, and um, some people can already see some of the improvements uh, in the US with better maps, better rep representations of pedestrian and green areas, and even more accurate buildings uh, and shapes and, and stuff like that as well. But apparently right. at the moment there's a an Apple car being driven around in Canada mm -hmm. um, and they, they've advertised it all over the place there that they're going to be um, driving around in an Apple um, Maps car right. in Canada. Yeah, right. So or, I don't know about you, like when I had my iPhone, like the, the Maps was a bit rubbish to be honest and uh, yeah I used to just I just downloaded the Google Maps and away I went and it was a lot a lot it was it was a lot better um, yeah so well now I've got the Android phone well yeah I've just stuck with the, the Google Maps not much other choice but um, it was Apple Maps they didn't they uh, hook up with TomTom Tom or something I think a little while ago yeah they did they did at that point um, but I don't know what's happened there um, apparently Apple's going in through there and uh getting their own data now yeah right that must, that must have uh, fell over so, so so what they say they say that it's all about improving data quality um oh yeah so keep going joe are you finished with that or are you gonna yeah just just saying that they're using um things like uh, gps rig um l i d a r arrays which is like light detection and uh ranging arrays right um they're using eight cameras that shoot high resolution images, pretty much like the Google car. Hmm. Um, yeah, so it's not something not something they've been promoting a lot. They've sort of been doing it in, in the quiet. 
but they are working on doing a remap a revamp of the apple maps yeah so they look like they're doing a street view thing um cycling directions and maybe turn by turn directions using augmented reality that's right yeah hmm interesting well uh well i can't wait for that one well i won't have it because i've got an android but um yeah, there yeah, you I go. think once you kind of get the market with something, you kind of it's really hard to compete, isn't it? Well, I mean, if you hit the market, then it's rubbish. Well established in that in that in that platform, aren't they? So yeah, well, if you hit the market, and it's rubbish, and you, there was always already Google there before you. Uh, you got a you got a long way to go. But like then, they're trying to compete with Spotify. It's the same thing. All these music companies trying to get up and compete. Yeah, and then now they're into the TV space. You know, the TV shows. Yeah. Well, there's yeah. that, the actual Apple TV streaming service and all this sort of stuff. Although like Disney's now opened theirs and bought a lot of the shows. Everything's going to be exclusive from one network to another. It's going to be so frustrating. Mm. Well, that's right. It, the, the market is, it was all together in Netflix, but now everyone's going, oh, hang on a second. Well, we want our own shows. We want our own slice so of the pie. Exclusive yeah. rights to those individual shows, yeah. Mm. Are we glad the Game of Thrones is over? I haven't seen it yet still all right i started so watching last, it last season anyway i, I watched the it. first four episodes so the first season yes season one a long way to go <laughs> you know i heard reports on the news of season eight wasn't wasn't as good so i haven't rushed to get to it now yeah right yeah no i, watched, I didn't mind it i thought it was quite good yeah, it got my interest so yeah i'll keep watching it um all right anyone else got anything else only that have you ever heard of prime os mm. yes i have yeah I've been playing with that all week, and I've got an old an old Surface Pro, and one I've always I've been for years wanting to upgrade my Surface Pro, but I could never decide whether I want to go out and buy an Android tablet or another Surface Pro. Right. So I, I managed to get Prime OS dual booting on my Surface Pro. Yeah, right. So Android running with all my Android apps on my Surface. Yeah, that's so. Right. What what version is that that you're running on there, John? It's the latest, the latest version of Prime OS. Yeah. So, point four or something. Whatever. Yeah. How does that compare with the Android version? What version would that be equivalent to? Oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know what it's equivalent to. I didn't even read the website to find out. Yeah. It uh, it's just interesting like, to know. Interesting it to know. Like it was the latest. It was built on the latest one. I'm pretty sure. You'd have to go to the website, but it's whatever that's on their website currently. Um, it would say on their website what, what it was. Yeah, I'm having a yeah. look on there now. It's uh, well, it says the main line is yeah the point four point five installed, so that's not it. Um, main line's the one I installed. Um, description, additional information, no yeah, wait time. Say what Android it's built on. Yeah, yeah. Well, the reason I ask is because if you have an older a tablet that hasn't been updated, yeah, you know, it's still pretty good. It's still got like you know three or four gigs of RAM, and and it's still got your quad core processor. You can still probably um, flash that on it, and it should be fine. Rather yeah, than just absolutely, it runs really fast. Like you can run it off. I had trouble getting the the Surface Pro to to, to boot um, from SD cards and USBs. Apparently, the Surface Pro four and upwards will boot from USB and SD cards, but the early ones don't. So at the moment, I've had to install it and then install the Grub, which I didn't want to do because now I'm going to have to get rid of the Grub if I ever want to change it. So I'm, I wanted to just you know. You know, change change your boot just by holding in a couple of keys when mm. you want to boot it up. But but yeah, I'm I'm really impressed. Really yeah. impressed. And what it. made you want to do that anyway? Put uh, oh, just yeah. because there's apps there's apps I want from the Android store that I use for work. Right. My bands and stuff for like my engineering apps and things like that, and I can't get them on Windows. But I'm primarily a Windows user, so everything else I do on Windows running and maintaining servers and all those things that you do that you, that you that I don't want to do on Android or even on Apple or any of those I want them on Windows yeah um, I want Windows yeah fair enough like I went I went away and and um, you know for holidays in summer and I took the surface with me as my main computer and I you know I put put virtual box on it and mm. took my XP with me so I can run my mile yeah right. um, you know, and all those things, but you're not going to go and do all that with Android. So you ran, mo I, you you wanted to run my on holidays. Yeah, I know, isn't that terrible? I had yes. to catch up on. So, <laughs> I, and I took that. So then, and then you know, you use Android for everything else. So it just kind of, I mean, I've always had a dual boot Chinese kind of mm. tablet. It's always been a bit 
okay, but never great. Even the Android running some of the apps I wanted to run, it was a bit, a bit sluggish and a bit yuck. But as soon as I put, as soon as I put this Prime OS on the Surface Pro, I was really impressed. Mm, yeah, that's good. All right, another good so, tip. I mean, it probably won't work on Surface RT. I think you'd have trouble doing it on that to revamp an old yeah. RT. But yeah, yeah well, the Google Go, the the uh, Surface Go. I don't know if it'll work on that, but Surface Pro is good. Yeah, they just one but fun for the week. They, were, they were one letter off with that RT, weren't they? Yeah, they certainly should, were. Should have been RS. Yeah, yeah. all right. <laughs> well, the Surface, the Surface Go is the kind of the the new age version of that, isn't it? It's got it's got Windows S on it. You mm. can only install apps from the App Store. But they reckon it's great. I, I was at JB Hi-Fi only today, just having a look at the new surfaces because I don't know what they're worth or anything like that. And I asked the lady in the shop, I said, "What's the most popular?" You know, out of out of all these, and she said the Surface Go is really popular. Well, it's not the first time a device is only allowed to uh, purchase from the one place, is it? So, you know, look at Apple. You can't do nothing else with them. So, I guess if people want the security and the safety and the closed environment, and knowing that it's not going to be maybe infected, well, let you go for one of those. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't want to go and install programs on their Surface Goes. They want a tablet that is Windows that they can. Mm. Just their email on and their internet on and you know their their OneDrive and OneNote and all those things on which you can do yeah. without installing any applications at all and yeah. they're only about five six hundred bucks those ones they're really cheap yeah all right well um that's about brings us to the end for the show this week that's good that went fast didn't it um, yeah. hey so I hope you get your router sorted Joe. your little yeah look uh, yeah look I don't know I'm gonna have to try something because. Uh, I, I don't want to swap everything over to just no. the Samsung. I reckon no. you've, you've just got to look at trying to get that thing, plug your computer into it, get that setup screen, whatever they call it, the the, the whatever the screen they call it. It's the the router's GUI, the setup screen, the landing screen, the whatever before, it is. It does look like it's only an app to operate it. Yeah, you right. Know, getting on YouTube and getting some videos and reviews and having a look at mm. But anyway, that'll be something for us to talk about next week. We'll find out how it went, Joe. How did you find out how it all went? All right. Good stuff. Well, thanks for coming in, boys. We'll see you guys next week. And, yeah, um, yeah we'll find out how Joe went with his little device. So thanks for listening. Thanks, everyone, on the Facebook. Scott, Jordan, Justin, uh, Chris. Hi, Chris. Ray. Uh, and everyone else that, that came in. Gra- uh, Graham, Karen. I don't Kawa. think I can even see any of those. Things. Brett. My browser's gone funny. I don't know who's on there. Who's not? All right. Thanks, guys. And um, thanks for listening. And we'll see you all next time. All right. I'm thirsty. Cheers. Bye-bye. See you later.